it's great to see students from all over India logging in. Um, first year, second year, MBBS, um, even, uh, you know, seniors, I see third year. So uh, great. Good morning, all. I'm Jennifer, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to today's medical webinar on the topic, Robotics in Surgery. Is it a fancy technology or a patient-centered advancement? We're very happy and honored to invite our presenter, who will be joining us very soon, Dr. Utaya Kokalare. Dr. Utaya Kokalare completed his MBBS in Bangalore Medical College and went on to do his surgical training in orthopedic surgery, urology, vascular surgery, and emergency medicine rotating in UK. While in the UK, he obtained his MRCS from the Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh. He started his surgical residency as an intern in Mount Sinai Medical Center, New York, and then completed his surgical residency. After his residency, he moved on to complete a year of advanced minimally invasive bariatric and gastrointestinal surgery fellowship at the University of Massachusetts Memorial Medical Center. He then obtained the Fellow of the American College of Surgeons, FACS certification in 2007. Dr. Kokolare is the current chair of the Department of Surgery at the Northridge Hospital Medical Center, Los Angeles. In the past, he also served as the medical director for the Institute for Metabolic Weight Loss Surgery at the Mission Community Hospital, as well as the medical director for the Center for Weight Loss Surgery at the Northridge Hospital Medical Center, both in California. His areas of expertise are mainly in the field of minimally invasive laparoscopic surgery and robotic surgery. He trained to be a robotic surgeon in 2009 and since then has performed many surgeries using the robot, among which includes colon, foregut, abdominal solid organ, abdominal hernia, and gallbladder surgeries. His expertise in laparoscopic and robotic surgeries in all areas of the gastrointestinal tract and the solid organs is par excellence. Apart from being a minimally invasive surgeon, Dr. Kokalera is also involved in hospitals acute care surgery and trauma surgery. Dr. Kokalera has won new accolades throughout his career. He was the recipient of the Outstanding Laparoendoscopic Resident Achievement Award presented by the Society of the Laparoendoscopic Surgeons in 2005. He is also the three-time winner of the Stanley Conklin Award for Research Manuscripts presented by during his surgical residency. We are very proud and honored to have you with us, Doctor. Before I pass on to Dr. Kokolera, I would like to let the participants know that this is a very interactive session. So please keep posting your queries in the Q&A box. Good evening, uh, Dr. Utaya. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm yes, Siddharth, good, good evening. I'm the managing trustee. And I want to say welcome uh, to the session. Good evening to you and good morning to our large number of students here. And uh, thank you for making time uh, to be with us. Um, your absolutely distinguished career is truly impressive. And I think we have a host of students and a a very <clears throat> eager audience waiting to hear from you. Um, so, um, you know, we'd, we've already uh, introduced you to the audience. They all know uh, your area of expertise and are really looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, again, I apologize for uh, the technical difficulties. I must yeah. admit, uh, doing robotic surgery is probably much more easier than uh, getting <laughs> getting used to Zoom and getting used to technology, the latest of technology. Uh, computer technology, but um, yeah, uh, truly, truly sorry. Uh, what I'm going to do, um, can I start? Uh, is that okay Absolutely. if I start? Yes, yes, yes go ahead. Let, let, me, let me share my screen. I, uh, hopefully that should work without yes. much of a problem. Sure. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, Share. Share. Okay, yes. in a minute. Yes. yes. You can see now? Yes. Yes. You, you can see the screen which says robotic surgery, just fancy technology. That's one, right? Which is in yes. black? Yes. yes. Can you we see can anything see else? Yes. You can't see anything else, right? No. 
Okay, perfect. All right. So again, once again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and um, and uh, giving me the opportunity to be part of your student uh, uh, education. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, to be part of this. Um, you've all uh, probably read about me and. Uh, uh, and I also must apologize before I go further that uh, part of this talk is geared for people who are interested in trying to get into the world of medicine and into the world of surgery. And they would like to know what is surgery and what what uh, what is robotic surgery. So part of this talk, the, at least the first part of it, uh, that's what it is. And I do apologize for, for students who are already into the world of medicine, who already know most of what I'm going to say. But um, but I think the, the gist of the talk is the end is when I talk more about robotic surgery. So uh, please bear with me about this. Uh, and uh, without much further ado, I think I'm going to start uh, talking, like I said, um, so quickly about what is surgery uh, and uh, um, are robots being used for surgery nowadays? And if so, how uh, can I use the robot to make uh, sick people get better quickly and with less pain? And if you're planning a career in surgery, uh, can you use the robot in any kind of surgery that you do? So that's uh, pretty much what I'm going to do today and talk about today. So a little bit about me. I know you all uh, sort of know about what I did. Uh, I started off my schooling in uh, St. Joseph's Indian High School in Bangalore. And then I went on to do uh, uh, medical school in uh, Bangalore Medical College, Bangalore. Um, I then went to England. Um, I did my MRCS. Uh, then in England, uh, uh, in Edinburgh, uh, I worked in uh, three different hospitals. They uh, basically started off my surgical career there. Uh, so, uh, so that was what it was. And after that, I moved to the U.S. And in the U.S., uh, um, they did not sort of give me full recognition for the MRCS that I did in England. So I had to start my residency back here again. Uh, the first year was at Mount Sinai uh, Medical Center in New York. And then I moved to do my complete my surgical training at the, the Guthrie Health System at, in Pennsylvania, New York. I'm sorry, Pennsylvania, uh, U.S. And then I did a, fellow, did a fellowship in minimally invasive surgery, meaning advanced laparoscopy and, and uh, bariatric surgery at, the, uh, at UMass Med Memorial Medical Center in Boston, uh, U.S. Uh, since then, I joined here. Uh, this is, um, I work at Northridge Hospital Medical Center. We are in North, uh, North Los Angeles. I've been the chair of the Department of Surgery for about four years. I'm currently the uh, medical director for minimally invasive and uh, robotic surgery in my hospital. And I also do acute care surgery and trauma surgery. So if, if you are all interested in trying to figure out what acute care surgery is and what trauma surgery is, uh, please uh, let me know and I could uh, explain it at the end of the, end of the talk here. So, but, so that is what I do. Most of my uh, work is uh, minimally invasive and robotic surgery and uh, uh, the other part of my work is acute care and trauma surgery. So basically, what is surgery? I'm sure you all know what surgery is. We uh, take a look inside the body. It could be anywhere uh, inside the body. It could be the brain. It could be the neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis, um, pretty much everywhere. So our job is to, um, to remove what's not working in the body, to take it out, um, to remove what is bad, um, what's not working, what's uh, diseased, uh, what's cancerous. Um, and uh, a person who does that is called a surgeon. I'm sure you all know about that. And I told you the first part of this talk was uh, to do that. So, so the question about how do most of my work is uh, do a, is uh, surgery in the in the belly. So uh, I'm going to try and stick to that part of the talk. Uh, we do um, cuts uh, on the belly called uh, incisions. We call them incisions, and uh, and uh, there are different ways in which a surgeon uh, can do his incision. So one large cut in the belly, like you've seen, um, may have seen or may have done your surgical rotation uh, or uh, in a clinical rotation in surgery, if you've already done it, you already know this, it's called a laparotomy. Uh, laparos means belly, otomy is an opening, so a laparotomy uh, is one large cut. But you all know this causes, the bigger the cut, more the pain, um, many more days in the hospital, um, there is complications, wound complications, wounds open up, and uh, this is associated with lots of blood loss. So basically what the world of surgery began to do was to try and see if we can minimize all these things. We can minimize the amount of um, 
pain, suffering, hospital stay, complications, and blood loss in patients. Um, so, uh, so then what they did was they did many small cuts. They said, we'll try and do many small cuts, also called laparoscopy. Laparos, again, is the belly scope is to look in. So we do many small cuts. We do, lap, we do what we call laparoscopy. And you'll definitely see that it's definitely different, better, uh, compared to one large incision. This can be done both using lapro using traditional laparoscopy and uh, and and the use of robot nowadays. Um, we can also do most surgeries with one small cut. It's called single incision surgery, and you can see the difference uh, in the first picture up above. You can see that there are small multiple small cuts, but in this one you see one small cut in the middle in the belly button um, or the umbilicus, you call it. Um, again, we can do laparoscopic uh, surgery through that, and we can do robotic surgery through that. Uh, so that's the advances we've seen uh, in the world of robotic surgery in the last six years uh, when the robot was capable of doing single incision surgery. And I'll show you a video in the end if you have time of how, uh, how I did the single incision gallbladder surgery. So to look into the belly, what we use, we use something called the trocars. Uh, trocars are a thin, long... Um, instruments uh, that we make a small incision and we put this into the belly and um, um, through which we can pass the scope. Um, we, we make multiple such uh, incisions to put in different parts of the, of the belly to look in and uh, to help us do, do our work. And so to look inside, we need cameras and we use different kinds of cameras uh, to look inside. And I'll tell you slight differences between robotic cameras versus traditional laparoscopic cameras um, that we have, that we do. Um, so quickly about robotic surgery. So a robot is a platform uh, uh, and sort of a tool to do the procedure. It's just like um, uh, using a, an interface, a computer interface between a surgeon and the patient. And, uh, and you put the computer in between and that helps in trying to decipher a lot of uh, uh, issues that can happen between the two and then try to take that away so that the patient finally benefits from surgery. It has interactive arms, and I'll show you a picture of that, uh, that serve as extension of the surgeon's hand. So traditionally, the surgeon has two hands and that's all he can use. And so if he has to use any more hands, he has to get an assistant to help him, either another surgeon or a, 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 a scrub tech who's in the operating room uh, a physician assistant, somebody to help him do the surgery. But the beauty of the robot is uh, you can. It, the robot has four arms and you can use all four arms and you control as a surgeon, you control all four arms. So that way you know where each arm is, what it's doing, and you can make the arms do what you want them to do. So, and each arm can be equipped with different surgical tools and, and the camera can move to different arms. So that way we can have a, 360 degree look of where we're operating. And traditionally the open surgeons used to always say, oh, we cannot look here and there. And so this is, this is one thing that you know, gives us the ability to look around anywhere you want because of the capability of the robot. And then obviously it helps us to do the surgery. It helps us to suture, it helps us to dissect, it, hel it, it helps clamping of tissues, manipulation of tissues, and, and um, 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 and anything that you want to do inside the body, inside the belly, that you'll be able to do. Um, a brief history of robotic surgery started always all back in the 1950s, um, uh, but uh, it was all very primitive, still in the work of uh, trying to figure out, figure things out. Most of the development started in the 80s when uh, they started feeling the need for, uh, for uh, robotic surgery. Basically, it all started when they needed someone uh, someone in the battlefield and to send a surgeon up the front up to the front to help um, help the um, uh, uh, soldiers wounded soldiers was uh, and if you send a surgeon and if you lose that surgeon that's the only person you have and you don't want to lose a surgeon so you wanted some way of translating what a surgeon can do in the hospital all in the front in the battlefield uh, up in the front line so so that's why they thought, let's develop a robot that can help the surgeon do that from a remote place. And, and therefore we can, you know, we should be able to uh, do that. Yeah. 
Any questions so far? I know I'm going a little fast because I took 10 minutes of time that I wasted. So I want to stop here just to ask a few questions to see if you have any, uh, if anybody has any questions. I don't know. Is there a chat? There is a chat box here. Um, Doctor, we don't have any questions as of now, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions coming up uh, in the next few minutes. But yeah, for now, we have a question from Neelesh. Can you take that, please? What is your view on artificial intelligence in medical field? Is there any ah. chance? Okay. So let me, um, that's in the end of my talk. I'm, I'm not going to touch too much because this is more about robotic surgery. Um, so let me see. Hold on. It's I don't think we've come close to doing uh, artificial intelligence yet, uh, but that's in the works. Uh, the, the thing is, with the human body, everything is different. Each person is different. So uh, it's sort of difficult to, um, to, do, to do artificial intelligence. But yes, they are still working on that. And, uh, and hopefully, it will come in the future. But at this point, the integration between robotics and artificial intelligence is not there yet. Hope that answers your question. The next question is, so why use the robot in, uh, to, do, to do surgeries? And uh, um, that was a question many people asked and surgeons from the yesteryears prefer to state that, uh, you know, we don't need robots. We are, the human brain is the best and everything. And now over the years, you know, that you do need computers, you do, you do need computers to help you. Even let's say for simple things like driving, you have, you have a computer in the car that will tell you uh, you're drifting off from your lane or it'll tell you, it'll sense, sense that there are cars around you. It'll give you a lot of warning. And, uh, and so basically, even in the world of surgery, we've realized that you do need computers, that you do need, you do need the uh, use of computers in surgery. So the computer in surgery comes in the way of a, of a robot. So basically what it does, it helps to minimize surgeon errors. Um, you know, the, uh, it, it helps to identify structures better. It helps to minimize surgeon errors. Um, and surgeon can do a long operation, let's say four or five or six hour operation. He can sit and operate. And I'll show you a quick video of that in the end, but that's, that's how it is. So, um, and then uh, he has better control, better precision. So you, um, the instruments are uh, capable of uh, doing fine jobs uh, in very small, uh, minute areas or areas that are difficult to reach for the surgeon. So you're talking about the pelvis or you're talking about the hiatus or the upper part of the uh, abdomen. It, it, it tends to uh, give you better control. Uh, let's talk about the robot really. And um, uh, let's go ahead and meet the robot. So the robot, the, the new ro the robot we use in our hospital is called the Da Vinci XI, and uh, it's from Intuitive Surgical. Um, and the robot basically has three different components. One is the robot itself, that's one on your left. Uh, the one in the middle is called the, uh, the control tower, uh, where all the uh, controls are done. And the one on the right is called the surgeon console, where the surgeon actually sits and operates. Um, and the surgeon and the robot has four arms. If you look at it, it's a one, two, three, and four. It has four arms and multiple elbows that you can see that help in uh, multiple movements of the robot. The um, the robot, if you can see this one, and the videos are not going to show this robot. They're going to show the older robot. But this robot is the more advanced one, which has the uh, it is um, all the arms are uh, 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 are um, uh, put on a boom. Uh, and the boom rotates 360 degrees. So basically, no matter how the patient is and no matter where the robot is, the, the robot can be, the uh, arms can be moved in such a way that you can uh, use the arms in any part of the human body or any part of the abdomen, you can use it. So that's how, that's how it's, set to, it's set to be made. So just a few videos now, I'm gonna show you a few videos about getting, uh, how you get ready for the robot. So, so um, just ignore the background videos, but if you look here at the, um, uh, the back table, it's called where the, uh, the robot's being draped and, uh, uh, and, the, and there's a back table there. Uh, so this is, this is called a back table here and uh, all the stuff is placed here. A, this is all sterile. And if you look at the, 
robot has been draped with sterile drapes uh, on the left hand side so that's how uh, the robot is um, set for surgery before or before surgery and there you see the surgeon console um, the next thing we do is to dock the robot into the patient. So it's called the docking of the robot, where the robot is actually connected to the patients. We've already put all the trocars in, which I showed you earlier. It's this thin, long instrument that goes into the belly. Uh, and so the so one of the nurses or scrub techs will come in and uh, wheel the robot in, and the surgeon basically uh, grabs the robot and uh, you know they, takes it to a place where uh, the trocars can be connected to the arms. Of the, of the robot. So that's called docking of the robot. And, um, and this is how it's done. So the next thing I, like I told you, you secure the robot to the trocars. Uh, so that way uh, the robot then uses that trocar uh, and the instrument that goes through the trocar to work inside the abdomen. So this is how we connect the, uh, the robot to the trocar. And there are multiple buttons on the on the arms of the of the robot that helps you connect the robot to the to what we call the trocar. So, so uh, only only if it's connected to those trocars and the robot knows, only then the robot starts working. Uh, if it's not connected, if it's loose, then it it will not work. So that's how that's how that works um, uh, with with the robot. It's another short clip where uh, now you already connected uh, connect the uh, robot to the um, uh, to the main um, camera port. Uh, the one port is called the camera port where the camera goes in, and the and the robot's connected there. And what you see through the camera is what you see on this uh, on this screen here, and that will tell you how how it uh, how it is on the inside. So people on the outside who are not working on the uh, on the uh, robot. Uh, we'll be able to see what's going on on the inside. Changing of instruments, again, is, is, is uh, uh, people ask me how are instruments changed once the robot is already connected. Um, so, so the scrub tech here is taking one instrument out and putting another instrument in. The robot recognizes uh, the spot where the previous instrument was. So it's just easier to just put the instrument in, and um, and the and the and you can kind of continue to start working. Another quick video here, which shows you from our so so that's how quick that's how quick it is to change an instrument uh, um, when you need when you need the instruments quit done quickly. It's pretty easy to to change the. Um, um, uh, change the way the robot uh, okay. robot uh, instruments are exchanged, and obviously performing surgery. So um, we have multiple robotic instruments that we use. Um, so this is uh, uh, this is a, what we this is a, a hernia being performed, an inguinal hernia being performed. Um, uh, So if you see how the robotic arms move on the outside, but the nice thing is all the movements happen on the outside, but at the level of the belly button, um, the, I must tell you that the stomach is blown with, uh, with CO2 gas so that you're able to see what's going on on the inside. I'm not gonna show you videos of the inside because uh, this was not a talk for that, but this is how the robot works on the outside. Uh, and, and the robot uses the trocar as the fulcrum of a movement rather than the abdominal wall. So the wall of the belly is not being used as a fulcrum. The robot uses its trocar as the fulcrum. So thereby it decreases the amount of pain that you can get from surgery. This is another one of the same thing. From another angle, how you see how the robotic arms work. What you're seeing here is the abdomen. And you're seeing three trocars being placed. One is the camera in the middle and two working ports. And this is how a surgeon performs, uh, performs the surgery. I like robotic surgery mainly because I can sit and perform surgery. Um, 
that's the nice part of doing this. So even if the surgery takes three, four hours, it's easy to just sit and operate. Um, so, so basically what I'm doing here is using the, what we call the joysticks, what looks like the joysticks. And this will show you how when I move my fingers and arms here, you see the robot arms moving on the left-hand side there. There are many buttons that we use. Uh, even the legs are being used when I'm operating, but here you don't see it. But my legs are using uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, coagulation devices uh, that we use when we uh, have to burn tissues and coagulate tissues. We use the uh, coagulation button, but unfortunately that, that's not seen in this, but I'm using my leg to do that. When you hear the beeping sound, that's what it is. Again, this is the same thing again. Sorry, from another angle. Um, so once the surgery is done, we uh, what we call undocking of the robot. Uh, um, when we um, the robot is uh, disconnected from the trocars and then it's, it's sort of wheeled back. Uh, unfortunately, the robot doesn't move on its own. We have to move it. Um, so, uh, so one of the nurses in the OR will usually pull the, pull the robot back. This was a, this was my son using the robot a few years ago uh, when he was six years old. Um, I just put this video to show you that people ask me um, about whether it's easy to use the robot. And I tell them, yes, it is. It's uh, pretty easy to use the robot. Um, uh, it's pretty easy to use the robot. And people think that you need to have played a lot of video games and stuff like that when you're a kid to use the robot, not necessarily. I've seen, I've seen surgeons who did pretty badly uh, with the laparoscope. I've seen them do better with the robot uh, because the robot takes away a lot of uh, difficulty that we see in, a, in uh, when we do laparoscopy. Unfortunately, it wasn't the beginning part of my talk, but I was not able to show you that. So basically it's very intuitive. It's very easy to work with um, and uh, you know, um, the other questions I get asked is, uh, what's the training? What do you what do you train for? How do you train to be a robotic surgeon? So if you're doing a residency, I'm not sure about how it is in India, but in the US, uh, when you do a residency, nowadays, all residency programs pretty much have a robot and they usually are able to use the robot. Uh, and the residents have to train on the robot and have to do a certain number of cases to be proficient in using the robot when they go and work, start working on their own. For surgeons who already done residency but don't have a robot in their residency or surgeons like me who, who trained, passed out of residency many years ago, there's something called the dry lab and the wet lab. The dry lab is pretty much what you saw, what the six-year-old was doing, um, small, um, uh, small exercises you used to uh, do on a, on a dry uh, box, uh, certain exercises you do to learn how to use the robot. The other thing is they have a, a 3D animation and simulations that you can do and you have to spend a certain number of hours to do simulations and to do uh, to learn how to use a robot. And there's something called the wet lab where you can go and work on either pigs um, uh, or you can work on uh, cadavers uh, to uh, to do cases um, to to get used to using the using the robot. Um, I put this video basically to show you that when you're when one surgeon is training uh, and doing and doing surgery and another surgeon is training him, uh, you can draw on the screen up there to show the surgeon what he needs to do or where he needs to be or how he needs to be doing a certain a certain part of the operation. So it's sort of easy to show a surgeon, uh, you know, what he needs to do. Um, 
anyway, I'll I'll end my talk here because I think I want to give a little time for uh, for uh, questions and answers. Um, I'm I again once again apologize for for the technical difficulties we had to go through through this. Uh, actually, I had more slides to show you, but I guess I had to cut it short because um, because of this. So. But anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I'll try to answer them for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. So I would like to first thank you, doctor, for this wonderful talk on robotic surgery. It was a pure delight listening to you on the different surgery models, be it laparoscopic or robotic surgeries and the real time experience of using these tools in the surgical room, the instruments and how do you change instruments during surgery? It was such a delight and I'm sure uh, the young medicos, FFE medicos had a great time listening to you. So before I move on to the Q&A session, I would like to invite FFE's managing trustee, Dr. Sudha Kida, to say a few words. Over to you, Sudha. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. And uh, thank you, Dr. Uteya. It, um, this, uh, you know, clearly your talk is something of great interest to our students. We have had for over 400 of them uh, join us this um, morning. And, uh, you know, your uh, field is uh, definitely new uh, to, um, I think uh, it's not um, this kind of training and opportunity that you have had. It's something new for our students in India. Uh, there's a great deal of interest. And uh, you can see the chat box is full of questions for you. So um, I want to say thank you on behalf of the Foundation for Excellence for making time for us. Uh, your evening and uh, you know it's over to you uh, to uh, uh, have uh, the questions that our students have posed for you uh, if you would please take a few moments to answer them and Jennifer here will moderate um, will be able to moderate that we also have Mr. Ram Kolevenu who is the uh, chief operating officer of the foundation here with us and he will uh, talk to you in a few minutes as well yeah sure thank you yeah I will definitely answer some questions I think that's. I think that'll that'll be more uh, energetic than my talk, my technical difficulty talk. So yeah, sure. Yeah. So we have the first question from Roshni Kumari. What is the probability of errors in robotic surgery? Is it more than human surgeon? If there is an error in robotic surgery, what are those? And I would like to know more about it. So so what I wanted to touch base on in the first part of the talk was, the robot really doesn't do any surgeries the surgeon actually does surgeries. So if there's a problem in the operating room and the surgery went bad, it's not the robot, it's the surgeon who's doing, this, doing, the, doing the mistakes. So you must, one must understand that robotic uh, surgery is not the same as robots that are doing cars or building cars. They've got a fixed, a fixed thing to perform and they just perform that. So if that something goes wrong, it's a technical difficulty with the robot. But with, with robotic surgery, the surgeon performs the operation. He just uses the robot to perform the operation. So if there's any anything that goes wrong, it's usually the surgeon who, who did that. It's rarely the robot who actually translates it. Whatever you do outside in the console is translated inside the abdomen. So if there's something that's that goes wrong, it's it's the surgeon, it's not the robot. Thank you, doctor. So we have the next question from Abhishek Sharma. So the software used for this robotic surgery at your place, is it a proprietary or an open source? If it's an open source, can it be replicated and used in India for robotic surgery? Actually, India does have the robots. They have the same, they have the same robots. So um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is probably, uh, it, is, uh, it belongs to intuitive uh, surgery. They are one of the main, main, um, uh, main companies that provide robots in the US. Um, uh, there are other companies that do provide robots, but it's not as uh, as good as the, the Da Vinci XI. So definitely, it's not commercially available. Their software is patented. Every small thing that they do is patented. So no, but there are robots in India. There are robots in Bangalore. I know, I, I've known of people who've had robotic surgery in Bangalore. So uh, it, the only thing that's prohibitive is, I think, the, the cost you know, that comes along with it. But over course of time, um, in the in the U.S., we give a we say about 18 cases a month. If you do with the robot, you break even with the cost of the robot. So if you do anything more than that, you make a profit on the robot. And each hospital does more than 18 cases a month. So, thank you, thank you, doctor. So we have a question: What is the drawback 
of robotic surgery if there is any drawbacks obviously like what trouble we had today what's the drawbacks of zoom is it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a computer so it can always go wrong it can always be an issue there can always be problems um so far i've done about 500 uh, or so robotic cases and to be honest i've really not seen one day where i've had a technical problem with the robot and the robot is connected wirelessly to their central system so if there's some issue going on immediately we get a phone call say what's going on is there a problem do you need some help so from a technical standpoint you know i've so far not seen um any issues uh, with the robot but yes it can happen it's technology so it can always you know it can always give you trouble thank you doctor so we have another interesting question as in how to choose robotic surgery or become a robotic surgeon in us is it mandatory to do post graduation in surgery in us or post graduation done in any country can be acceptable due to practice robotic surgery in us or is it a, is there any special course for robotic surgery which will suffice no this like i said training i i knew that question will pop up uh, training in robotic surgery uh, is um, uh, pretty much you have to be a surgeon uh, you have to do a surgical residency here i told you when i did my surgical residency in the uh, in in england and i came here they didn't they didn't accept what i did so um i'm not sure how it works in india but i think uh, to uh, to be a robotic surgeon in india i'm not certain how it works um but here for sure you have to be a resident sorry i'm just going to plug in my computer you have to be a resident um and you have to get trained and i told you the training modules that they have so you have to do that before you can you can uh, do robotic surgery so you need to be a surgeon first before you can start to using the robot yeah. thank you doctor so uh, will we be able to perform robotic surgery in the near future in organs like brain or thoracic surgery apart from abdomen so the thorax yes we do do uh, uh, surgeries in the chest uh, it's used in cardiac surgery uh, cardiac bypasses are being done with the robot the the niceness of the robot is the precision of the robot so even in tight spaces small spaces uh you can do uh, you can operate uh, without doing big scars so yes it's being used uh in the brain i am not so certain if someone's used it yet um but uh you know the brain um you have to open the skull to operate on the brain uh, there's no space you need some space when you're operating with the robot there's no space so it becomes difficult so i'm not sure about the brain but definitely the chest and the abdomen is what it's being used the most right now thank you doctor so we have one question from rahman which says how can we feel the organs as in when we do the robotic surgery nice question you know tactile feedback is what it's what it's called tactile feedback is very um it's zero on the robot so over the over the years or over the over the number of cases we do we learn the the look of the tissues and our brain knows how much uh, pressure we are putting on the tissues so one thing about uh, that's lacking or and with with the robot is the tactile feedback uh, that we get but it's amazing how you train your brain to learn how the tissues are uh, compression uh, the tissue compression how it works and how it you know how you can use that instead of tactile feedback uh, in the uh, when you're operating so yes there's no tactile feedback so the so that's one thing lacking in the robot hopefully in the future they will, they will get that thank you doctor since we can see robots do their work more precisely than humans within a short period of time is it always better to choose robots instead of humans for surgery i don't think you can take away the humans the human part of um uh, um uh, the human brain for uh, um and bring the robots in so no it is a it you need both you need the humans you need the robot you need both um i don't like i said using artificial intelligence we've not reached that stage yet we've not reached the point where we can uh, let the robot just operate program it and just operate no you need you need the human brain so uh, so i don't think we are there yet not in my time for sure thank you doctor so we have one last question for uh, this session ethical aspects of research and development on robotic surgery 
is there any ethical aspects that's been followed and i think that's right so so for any for any uh, surgeries anything that you want to do new in the us they're very strict about uh, the ethical aspects of it and the research aspects of it so it has to be uh, 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 what is it called the um, irb uh, the research board of the hospital has to approve it if you're doing anything and most of them are done in uh, in academic centers so they approve uh, they get irb approval and they do it that way from an ethics standpoint I don't see any issues with somebody coming and telling you, you cannot use a robot on me, which is fine. Then we won't use the robot. So it's, I've so far, I've not had any patients telling me, no, I don't want you to use the robot. I want you to operate on me. And, it, and it's the robot is such a new thing. And people think that it's a big thing. So they prefer to use a robot from an ethical standpoint. No. Um, of course, if you want to do something new with the robot, you need to have approval. Obviously, in the U.S., it's very strict. You cannot do something new or something that's not approved to be done uh, and do it on your own. No. So in continuation to this question, doctor, well, how different is a medical consent for the robotic surgery from the patient? Sorry, say that again. How, well, how difficult? How different? how different? How different is a medical consent that we get from the patient during a surgery different for a robotic surgery? Is there any difference? Oh, the consent. The consent yeah. for surgery. The consent. the consent remains the same because... You, you know, um, it's like saying uh, you need to go from uh, Bangalore to Mysore. Now, the question is how you're going to go from Bangalore to Mysore. Are you going to take the train? Are you going to take the plane? Are you going to drive? Uh, it's the same thing with the robot. Are you going to do it's the same thing with the surgery? Are you going to do surgery open surgery on me? Are you going to do it laparoscopically? Or are you going to do it with the robot? So most of my patients, I tell my patients, I'm going to use the robot to do your operation. In case I can't do it with the robot, I'm going to change to doing it laparoscopically or if i cannot do it laparoscopically i'm going to open i'm going to do a big incision so the consent always reads i'm going to do so and so robotically or so robotic removal of the gallbladder possible laparoscopy possible open so we get a consent like that so the patient understands that uh, it can change during the course of the, uh, the course of the operation so consents will always elucidate what we are planning to do and it will be clear cut for the patients Thank you, doctor. So we have two more questions. Do you have time to take it? Yeah, 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 please. I've wasted enough of your time. So I'm, I'm here. I'm okay to take those. Thank you. As human is performing the sur okay. As human performing the surgery, then how robot is reducing the errors? So, okay. I think the question is how are robots error reducing the errors that can be done by a human surgeon? Right. So, so one thing is the robots are very precise. So even if you make wide movements or, you know, you, the robot does not translate that into the abdomen. The uh, <clears throat> surgeon tremors are something that we see uh, as surgeon grows old. The tremors of the hands, uh, patient, uh, surgeon has not had his coffee in the morning. He can start having shakes. Uh, you know, it's a simple thing to say, but we've seen that happen. So things like that, the robot takes all that away. And two, the robot gives you a better magnification in what you're seeing. And the three, the robot gives you 3D vision. So depth of perception is, is available with the robot. With laparoscopy, you don't have that. So laparoscopy, your robot's taken away, but you don't have the depth of profession, perception and you're gonna go deep and may cause problems. So all those issues, the robot takes away. And if you're doing an unnecessary movement and the robot does not recognize that, robot does not will not do it. So there are lots of things that the robot, it's, it's like a computer and you have a computer in your car that says you're drifting away from your lane. You know, it's the same thing. So humans have tendency to perform errors, but there are computers there to stop you from doing that. It's the same thing with the robot. Thank you, doctor. So our next question is, is the pre-anesthetic medication any different in robotic surgery than in laparotomy? No, no. In fact, the pain medications we use for, for the robotic surgery is much, much, much less compared to open surgery uh, patients have less pain um, and you know there's less blood loss there's less pain uh, and uh, patients do really well uh, the the use of narcotic pain medications is very pr predominant here in the us and with the use of the robot that is significantly reduced the narcotic pain medications are very 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 rarely used on on patients thank you doctor so are robots used in open surgeries too 
Um, no. No, if you're if you're doing open surgery, you're 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 there, your hands are there, you you know, you just do it. Um, um, but the whole idea is not to do open surgery using the robot. If it's a big tu tumor that you're trying to remove, how do you do that with the small incision that the robot does? So it depends on what kind of tumor it is. Now we've taken I've taken out spleens uh, from the patient that I that are huge huge spleens, but you know the spleens, uh, it's because of some hematological disorder and it's not cancer. Now, if it's cancer, obviously, and it's a big tumor, there's no point in doing it robotically because in the end, you have to make a big incision to take out the tumor. Um, but some, some surgeons still do that because they say that the amount, of, uh, uh, the amount of time the abdomen is exposed is much less with that, and the amount of uh, interleukins that are uh, inflammatory mediators that are secreted in the abdomen are significantly reduced because the amount of time the, the, the abdomen is exposed is much, much less. So some surgeons even do that because sometimes the tumor is in such a place that it's hard to get your hands in there and operate in a safe way. So they use the robot, finish the whole operation and, and then, so when I do colon surgery, for example, I use, it, I use the robot completely and in the end I make a small, tiny, you know, five centimeter incision to take out the tumor, to take out the colon that I've that I've operated on. So, if, even if it's a big tumor, if it's a, even in a difficult place, you can still use a robot. In the end, you have to make a slightly bigger incision to take take it out. Now, with coming back to spleens, we still make a small incision, but we take the spleen out piecemeal, meaning in small bits and pieces. So that way, you don't worry about margins or anything like that, and it's okay to take it out. That way, the patient benefits with just a small incision in the end. So it all depends on what kind of tumor you're dealing with. Thank you, doctor. So the last question, is there any chance of spreading infection through the robotic materials? Now, sterility is, you know, it's, can you spread infection with your, when working with your hands? It's possible, that's why we wear gloves and everything. The sterility, we do adhere to strict uh, sterility rules in the operating room, so yes. So. Very, very unlikely. It's very, I don't think you can spread, in, it's all sterile. So it's, it's unlikely you will spread infections with the, with the robot, no. Thank you, thank you so much, doctor. So we've come towards the end of the session. Uh, I would like to thank you for taking up this Q&A and answering almost all the questions that scholars had. So I'd like to call uh, FFE COO, Ram, Mr. Ram Pulavenu, to uh, thank Mr. Do Dr. Uteya, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Dr. Uteya. It's been a wonderful session. I have learned so many things being, uh, not, not coming from a medical field. And thank you for staying up late. I know uh, you are a very, very busy surgeon and taking your time to actually talk to the students. I think uh, fairly interactive with the last questions, question session, I found it really, really interesting as well. Um, for me, uh, as a layman, I would look like look at this one more like a, you know, what we used to have in a manual cars, uh, but we still have a driver who's actually doing it versus today where everything is automated and you know we have a um, or everything all the systems to tell you which uh, way if you're banging clo getting closer to a uh, wall and things of those nature i think uh, that's probably an analogy of what i could uh, understand that uh, also making it simpler um, what you shown us uh, with the kids actually working through that so uh, the first thing which comes when you talk about robotics is then we in our mind uh, that it's a very complicated one and doing it and making it very simple and actually showing all those different elements and talking about new answers is really really helpful i think there would still be a lot a lot of questions which people may have and uh, we'd probably consolidate some of these um, and when you and send it to you when you have a, a free time you can probably answer that but i really wanted to take time to thank you on behalf of foundation for excellence students and alumni uh, for such a wonderful and enlightening session thank you very much no thank you thank you so much i mean I, again i apologize you know i think the robot works really really well i've not had any technical problems with the robot but when it comes to uh, uh, Zoom and doing this, I don't know why my computer plays up. Uh, I think I should just use my laptop from next time. Uh, but my laptop is also old, and I fear that my laptop will break down at a certain point. And you've noticed I had to connect my my laptop battery because I was I was uh, uh, you know fairly failing too. But uh, you know um, again, apologize because I thought part of the students that were going to be there were um, students who were considering a, a career in medicine. And I knew that some of them are going to be a doctor, uh, going to be doctors in the near future, and are considering a, a career in in surgery. Uh, and I want to tell 
tell the students who are considering a, a field in surgery is surgery is a great field. It's an amazing field. Um, you can do the most benefit for patients when you do when you do when you operate. It, it could be anything. It could be you know neurosurgery. It could be orthopedics or general surgery. Uh, and like I said, I do uh, acute care and trauma and trauma surgery. Uh, we make a difference. We really, really save lives. And I, it's, it's just amazing to be a, a, a trauma surgeon. And so if you're considering doing that, of course, it is uh, hard work. It is lots of time spent in your career uh, to get there. But it's truly, truly worth it as long as you understand that you're truly saving lives. So for all those who are considering, uh, you know, surgery as their field, please do it please welcome i welcome you to the world of surgery it's amazing and in the next five to ten years or 20 years the world of surgery is going to change uh, welcome the robots you know uh, open surgeries are going to go um so it's a great it's a great time to be a surgeon yeah so i thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to the young uh, uh medical students it really really uh, uh, you know gives me a lot of pleasure thank you so much for asking me to do this too yeah. Thank you, Dr. The only uh, request I have is if it is okay for you to share that slides, uh, some of the slides which you prepared, uh, with, with what, the ones which you couldn't go through, um, then we yeah. could actually share that with the students as well. Yes, yes. No, you know what I could do is it's a it's a huge file considering all the videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I can put it on a Dropbox. Sure. If Dropbox is okay with you, yeah. I can put it in Dropbox and you can I'll share it with uh, maybe Prathana. I can share it with sure. Prathana. If you've given me, if you give me your email. You've got my email. Please send me an email. Sure. I could I could uh, share it with you, and hopefully you'll be able to download it through Dropbox. It is a huge file, so unfortunately, right. we'll do that. We'll stay in touch. Yeah. And and, yeah. and thank you so much because I think we are going to have a large number of students uh, tracking you and wanting to seriously consider uh, this as their uh, career choice. Thank you for making that happen. <laughs> um, and uh, and if you know of others, uh, Dr. Utaya, uh, in uh, different fields uh, that could provide this kind of, um, you know, exposure to our medical students at whom you could recommend, that is something that we would really appreciate as well. So yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I can I can talk to some of my colleagues, uh, surgeon colleagues uh, in other fields yes. you know, and see if they're interested to do this uh, talk for sure. Yeah, we definitely will do. All right. And thank you so very much. Thank you. You're really welcome. Appreciate. You're, uh, you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And once again, apologize. No problem. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good thank night. You. Good night to you. Yes. Yeah, good morning to you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.